Good evening. Today is Thursday, August 27, 2015, and we have some very interesting things to talk about today. And the thing that I'm going to start off with is with Erica, trop which is a currently a weak tropical storm with 45 mile an hour sustained winds, 1,006 millibars, and is located just southeast of Puerto Rico. And on a projected path, it's expected to go um, somewhere uh, between Puerto Rico and, and Hispaniola. And then it's going to go through the Bahamas where it is expected to go undergo rapid strengthening. Where it is expected to go, where it is, ex where it, it is expected to undergo rapid strengthening. And then move up the east coast where it actually may affect the northeast. And I'm going to get to that right now. So Erica on its present track looks like, um, you know, harmless little low. It almost looks like a closed, you know, little wave, but just move on about 135 hours out and look at this, a, a strong storm right off of Florida. Then going to about hour 100 and, you know, 50, uh, 3, 156, and I'll show you what I mean. It's going to be a right off the, right on along the coast. And it looks like, you know, it's probably going to go inland and not do much, but just look what Erica is going to do. And keep in mind, this is only one model. It looks like Erica, you know, is just going to linger off the coast. But look, look what it does. It's going southeastward. And now look what else Erica is going to do. High pressure system to the north. And what does Erica do? It retrogrades back and then moves north, clipping eastern New England. That is a pretty scary track. I mean, another model that is even scarier than that is the Canadian. And I'll explain to you why. Um, that's the gem model. And I'll show you that model as well. That model also does not look good either. So the gem model, you know, the Canadian model, is showing something else, which is also very scary. It's showing a monster storm going up the coast. And I'll show you our 48 hours, where it's expected to be just north of Cuba. Or just near Cuba. Yeah, sorry, it's hour 60. There we go. That's Erica. Tropical storm. Go uh, another 24 hours later. Still a pretty healthy tropical storm, probably 60 mile an hour winds. Um, so about 24 hours later after that, it's now probably a minimal hurricane just off of eastern Florida. Um, a day later, it's a, probably going to be a pretty sizable hurricane off the east coast. Um, another day later, Erica is inland. It's on the coast of North Carolina. This is actually last night's run, so which means we have to go back 12 hours and then click 12Z and that's where Erica is supposed to be. So it's a 990 millibar probably hurricane right off of North Carolina. Go 12 hours later, another day later, look. Erica's, you know, just lingering around the New England area. Go to precipitation, and look, Erica is really, you know, looking pretty healthy. I mean, look at that. You got a healthy precipitation core. Um, look at two meter winds, ten, winds are 10 meters height. Um, that's a that's a hurricane right there. I mean, look, that's knots. These are winds in knots, not in miles an hour. Since these winds are in knots and not miles per hour, that is very scary. That is not good at all. I mean, that's red. It signifies 70 to 80 knot winds. So go into about um, even a little earlier, this is really surface winds. And that look, looks like at least category three winds. I mean, that's a category three hurricane based on these winds. Um, I wish I could show you further, uh, you know, in, going to about hour 168, 991 millibar, probably healthy tropical storm, maybe a minimal hurricane, because you know, this is only 10 meters height. Oh, look at that, red. It's going back into a hurricane string. That's another category one hurricane with an eye. Look, let's look at the precipitation core with this storm. Healthy rains in New York City area. Um, however, this run is showing, you know, Eric a little further to the west, inland, with less wind, of course. You know, probably 20, 30 mile an hour winds. I mean, look at that. That's not 40 mile an hour winds, 50 mile an hour winds. But this is showing something else. This is showing a hurricane going into New York, or at least a strong tropical storm now, going to precipitation. That's what Erica, what they're showing Erica with very heavy rain going into New York. That's ex exactly what Sandy did, except Sandy was a 943 millibar low. The, the thing is, why I think Erica will be a, a hurricane going in is because of the sea surface temperature anomalies. 
So SST anomalies, uh, remember how I always show you the anomalies and how if a hurricane formed, I said it's going to be very massive. Well, let's go to about right now, the, today. The entire Atlantic basin is way above normal, all the way, just up and down the East Coast. Let's go to about 2011 when Irene hit, to about the same time, August 25th. The water temperatures were a little cooler. You see some of these blue patches? And let's look to the year of Sandy, about the same time as last year. Um, I've been uh, very abnormally warm here, but uh, a little warm here. I'm more concerned about the water temperatures right off of New York City. In October, this is right, right before Sandy hit. This is actually the day of Sandy. This looks like an, uh, a winter storm type scenario. I mean, look at this. So early October, water temperatures weren't even that warm. Late September, oops, sorry, that's specific. Uh, late September, um, water temperatures were not that unusually warm. Even 2005, you know, you know the, the year we got all these record hurricanes, the only reason we had so much hurricanes is because we had a La Nina cooling the Pacific, you know, not a strong El Nino. But water temperatures were also very warm that year. I mean, look at this. Look at all this abnormally warm water, right? you know, right along the East Coast. You know, when Isabel hit in 2003 was another good example of a strong hurricane going up the coast. That happened, you know, in September. Going on at the same time, uh, you know, when Isabel hit, just before Isabel hit, the water temperature is also very warm. 2002, a category, a very strong Category 2 hurricane formed right around September 11th. But the water temperatures were very cool. So, with the water temperatures the way they are right now, I wouldn't be surprised if a strong hurricane came in. So I'm going to go to marine maps, weather underground. So marine maps. I'll show you something that is very scary as well. So um, let's look, go into the northeast, and I'll show you what I'm talking about. So this is just about 25 nautical miles south of you know Long Island. Let me see. I'm trying to click right there at that buoy. It's not working somehow. Okay. Maybe I'm going to go to buoy information. Um, buoy data. Yeah, buoy data. And that's the that's what I see, National Data Buoy Center. And NDBC. And for where? I definitely want to see the New York City buoys. That's the buoy I want to see right right off of New York. See the red? Oh, yellow means active buoys, I believe. Or red is that? Water temperatures. 75 degrees. I mean, that's not, you know, favorable for hurricane development. But this right here. Okay, sorry. Yeah. This is pretty close to New York. Okay, there's no other data from the station. Okay, water temperatures. Water depth 82.3 meters. Um, not showing the water temperature. That's what exactly what I need to see. Okay, let's see. Another buoy here. That's just showing me the hot waves. I need actual water temperature. I mean, another buoy, another good buoy to look at is the one right to the entrance to New York Harbor. That's a pretty accurate buoy. Water temperature is 77. That's very warm, actually. So. Another good buoy. Water temperature is 73. That is very unfavorable for hurricane development. 75 is pretty warm. I mean, that's definitely above normal. Let's go into, you know, Massachusetts Bay. Water temperature 71, not a favorable for hurricane development. Go down the coast a little bit. This buoy, as I said, is not showing me anything, so that is a non-favorable um, buoy. This is right off the coast of North Carolina, 79 degrees, 80. That's definitely marginal. This this is where the Gulf Stream is, 82 degrees. That is definitely favorable for major hurricane development. Um, so I could go to marine maps. I think for this, that buoy is. Let's see what that buoy is. That's definitely. That is this buoy right here. That's the buoy they're showing me. The Gulf Stream is actually a little further to the west. An nine three five zero. Not even showing me. I'm not showing me what I'm looking for. 
Yeah, that's not what I wanted to see. I wanted to actually see the buoy. And it's very, very hard actually clicking on the buoy itself. I guess they're not just get they just don't want to give me the information on the buoy. Uh, there, that's what I wanted to see. About 82 degrees. Let's look on to the same time about Irene. Actually, the same day of Irene, basically, for frying pan shows. More temperatures are a little about the same, but you can tell this is exactly when Irene came over. But you see, because of Irene, the water temperatures went down, it's back down to 80 degrees. So let's look the day, a couple days before Irene hit. Water temperatures were, wow, 85 degrees. However, how, there was a lot of uh, factors why Irene weakened. Irene was um, pulled in by a cold front, which caused dry air to go into the storm, and that's why Irene weakened. With uh, this storm, with Erica, that will not be a factor, because Erica will not be pushed in by any major storm, which means Erica could just sit there and spin. Erica is going to be an Ophelia-type storm. That happened in 2005. And water temperatures then were much cooler than they are now. See, this is about the same time Ophelia was coming in. Ophelia was a pretty big storm. This is 2005. Water temperatures were about the same as they are right now, basically. However, the Gulf Stream is the most important factor. You want to look at the Gulf Stream. This is not the Gulf Stream. The Gulf Stream waters are much warmer. For that, I'm going to show you the, I'm going to go back to the tropics. Um, there's another good place to look at. See, this is where the Gulf Stream is. This is, in fact, the Gulf Stream right here. The Gulf Stream waters are right about here. These are Gulf Stream waters here. 83 degrees. I mean, that's not very warm. But look what the water temperatures were of Miami's are. 88 degrees. That is warm. That is hot. 86 degrees. And the water temperatures in the Bahamas are close to 100 degrees. I mean, 90 degrees. Sorry, not 100. Let's look here. I'm oh, sorry. That's just again wave. I'm trying to see water. 86 degrees. That is definitely warm enough for uh, major hurricane development. Let's look at water temperature in hurricanes. Uh, water temperature right criteria for hurricane or hurricane development so hurricane signs org so so you at least at need at least 80 degree fair water temperature for for uh, hurricanes to develop and maintain their intensity um, okay um, water temperature hurricane. Hurricane. Okay, so it's about 79 degrees. Recipe for a hurricane. I think this is for a major hurricane. It has to be 82 degrees or warmer. I mean, you could get some uh, freak storms like Sandy that could, you know, if you get certain criteria, that could become stronger without, you know, the 85 degree water temperatures. So I'm gonna go right now to weather on the ground slash tropical. Um, and this will show us the water temperatures um, by going on to the North Atlantic. Yeah, this, this is a storm that's heading for Hawaii as well. This is this storm is heading for Hawaii. I mean, the, just north of it. So thankfully, Hawaii is going to be missed by the storm itself, which is like a whew, Hawaii's a you know Hawaii's getting a lot of lucky breaks from these storms. They're getting missed left and right. Uh, that storm, uh, what is it called? Not um, Kiko missed. Uh, Hawaii. But look, Hawaii is going to get missed by storm number one and perhaps storm number two as well, which is going to be, uh, I believe, um, Jimena. Yeah, that's the storm. That might thankfully miss Hawaii. But Hawaii on this map is well off to the west because it's forming about 120 degrees west. I mean, Hawaii is sitting like, I think, 160, 170 degrees west means Hawaii is out of this, you know, track. See, Hawaii is around 160 degrees west, 155. So Hawaii is sitting right about 20 degrees north longitude, or latitude, sorry. Longitude is the west. So it has to be below 20 degrees north and 155 degrees west. That's looking at three days. This is five days. I mean, 
How does this look for hurricane development? I mean, yeah, it's going to miss Hawaii just to the north as well. But what I w really wanted to show you was the tropical, um, the tropics, basically. So I'm going to show you Erica. Tropical storm Erica on water temperatures. Let's see if they'll show us. Not showing that right now, but. So Erica is really not changing its position much. I mean, it is at 16.6 60, .6 degrees north, which means it should pass just uh, right over Puerto Rico. And th this GFS run is showing, look, hugging the coast, and it's going to go hook back in. Most of these models are showing what Erica might do is either go in a gulf. Some of them are showing a gulf storm. Some of these are showing a, a coastal track. Most likely what will happen is it's going to be a Florida storm. It will definitely go like this and you know probably go inland. It'll probably be a Hugo type storm. I doubt that Erica will actually come into New York. The chance that Erica is actually going to do this is very unlikely. I mean this could happen. This could happen, but I most likely think Erica will probably go out to sea. This track could happen and we'll probably bring some local effects to the coast, maybe some winds and some rain. But if Erica does this, which is pretty unlikely, it will be a pretty major disaster. I mean, most likely Erica will probably uh, go between Hispaniola and Haiti. I mean, look, let's look at the models right now. If Erica clips Puerto Rico, goes north of Hispaniola, and does what the GFDL is forecasting, we are screwed. I mean, look at that. What Erica is, for, what Erica is showing right now, or the, this model, the NFG, GFDL, is showing just a monster storm. Look, let's look at the GFDL. That's red. That's showing a monster Category 3 hurricane. I mean, just look at that. That's 132 hours out. That is six days out. Uncertainties on potential U.S. impacts. I mean, look. All the models, the the GFDL, the IVCN, and the HWRF, all you know, native, uh, not native, uh, uh, Navy models are showing this potential track. And if Erica continues to you know go north of Puerto Rico, I'm going to show you the radar right now, based on Erica. Here's the center of circulation right here. So, yeah, the center of circulation right now is currently here. It passed, you know, over Guadalupe. Now it's going west northwest. Or that may not be the center, but it looks like it is because of how it, you know, the motions are. So, Erica will probably pass over P Puerto Rico, go north of Hispaniola, and it may do a GFDL type track. There's a chance Erica could be an Irene type storm, a Hugo type storm, or a Floyd type storm. It will not be a Sandy type storm, so we don't have much to worry about here in New York. I mean, we could get some of the fringe effects, like if it took an Irene type track. It, the reason I think it will be an Irene and not a Sandy is because the, uh, the, the uh, factors that were involved with Sandy are not there. There is no huge dip in the jet stream to that's so deep that Erica will do this. Erica may meander off these coasts and you know decide to go inland, but if Erica sits there and spins and spins and spins, it'll churn up a lot of cooler water, which means if Erica stays over the Gulf Stream, Erica's safe. But once Erica goes off the Gulf Stream waters, Erica will be prone to uh, collapsing. The only way Erica may survive if it goes through the Bahamas. That is the only chance Erica has of you know d becoming a major hurricane. I mean, even when Irene went over the Bahamas, it blew into a Category 4 hurricane with 140 mile an hour winds. But once it got north of the Bahamas and decided just to go to the west of the Gulf Stream, it quickly, quickly weakened to a Category 2 and then Category 1. And by the time it reached New York, after hitting North Carolina, uh, clipping New Jersey, and making a final landfall in New York City and Coney Island, it was already only a 65 mile an hour tropical storm. We did have some hurricane force wind gusts in New York City, you know, as Erica was dying down, but we were just west or east of the storm. My area was about five miles to the east of the center of circulation. I mean, later in the day, we had some strong westerly winds, 
that um, brought down a few trees. That was, you know, the upper level low associated with Erica coming through. That's why the tropical storm warnings were in effect until late in the day, even though by the time Erica was way into New Hampshire and, you know, Vermont giving them flooding rains. The difference between now and then the water temperatures are warmer on the Gulf Stream. Um, so Erica could potentially cause some major, major problems for us. I mean, these are 12 hour intervals. This is 24 hours later, probably another 24 hours later. This is Erica moving very slowly. You know, the GFS is also showing that. Now I'm showing a southern Florida type of track, which is probably not going to happen. But there is a but. Let's look at what the the ensemble models are showing. This is definitely the and of this is definitely that model I was looking at. This is, I think, the GFS. This is when, it, when they're showing ensemble. This is the GFS ensemble. This is not the ensemble for one model. This is only the GFS. This is the GF, GFS ensemble members. Now I'm going to go to spaghettimodels.com. And they will show you all the models, all the spaghetti models. Not just the GFS spaghettis, but all of them. So these are hurricane, these are tropical storm uh, chances, this is hurricane chances. You know, this is uh, hurricane force wind potential. And see, there's a little chance of that, uh, at least a 10% chance in about five days from now. But that's probably, most likely, it's probably going to be around here. But let's look at the spaghetti models again. Not the GFS spaghetti, but all of them. So this is the models I was looking at. This is the one that if Erica takes could spell major trouble for the East Coast. I mean, look how close it's going to be to New York City. If Erica goes on this track, which is pretty unlikely, Erica is most likely going to do something like this. You see how Erica shift more, the track is shifting more to the uh, west now? That's because the center had to refocus itself back into the thunderstorms, which were more to the south and west, which means Erica has to be more focused to the south and west. However, if Erica does something like this, we can still get some impacts in New York City. Probably rain and some gusty winds, but that's about it. From examining what I'm seeing with Erica, Erica will probably be moving very slowly through the Puerto Rico and the Bahamas. Land interaction with Hispaniola would mean a more southern track. And if Erica does not go over Hispaniola and maybe just brushes it to go to the north, Erica could potentially become a major East Coast storm. And that is very, very concerning, especially for areas from Florida up to New York City and even beyond that into New England. What, what I think is going to happen is probably Erica will, um, based on the, the visible satellite, the center of Erica right now is here. That's the center of Erica right now. And it's moving like this right now, which means Erica will probably not go directly be over Hispaniola because now most of the thunderstorms are here. So if Erica decides to co-locate itself here, more towards the northern part of the thunderstorms, if that's the center of circulation trying to reform itself to the north, the East Coast is in some deep, deep trouble. I almost said something I shouldn't have said, but yeah, we're in for a lot of storms, basically. And the good news is this could be a drought buster for Puerto Rico. That's the good news. It could be a real drought, drought buster for them. Um, I'll make another video informing you on Erica. Well, thank you so much and have a great day. Bye.